Congressman Brad Sherman of California has spent years as a champion of civil liberties. He voted against the Patriot Act, against warrantless wiretapping, against bulk data collection. So far, he has not yet commented on racist behavior. He joins us tonight. Congressman, thanks for coming on. I do want to differ with you on one thing. When you use the term monitored, you make it sound like Trump's people were the target. You know, if Kislyak, the Russian ambassador, orders a pizza, they're going to listen to the pepperoni guy. Right. That doesn't mean they're monitoring Papa John's. Well, they were actually monitoring Trump's associates. Whether they were the intended target of it or not is an open question. But as you know, the law allows the U.S. government to monitor American citizens when they are speaking with people from foreign countries. Again, intent is all that is up for debate, not the fact of the monitoring. But my question is... Well, the, the word monitoring is, is a little unclear. The, the person being monitored is the Russian ambassador or the Russian officials. Obviously, if they're talking to an American, there's going to, they're going to capture so that the voice person of the American. Not being monitored. So, so if that person wasn't being monitored, then why would Susan Rice be interested in the identity of that person? We want to understand what Kisilek has to say. The person who's not being monitored. You want you to want... know who that person is? Yes, because first of all, the, un <laughs> the unmasking is not just the unmasking may not have anything to do with the voice of the American. If the if Kislyak is talking to Moscow about Flynn. And you want to know what's he, what is he talking about? Right. Which official do they think they can manipulate? Right. Which official do they think is really smart? I understand. You want to know what they think. Right. Because you're monitoring, you're monitoring that no, person. You're, you're, monitoring. Not, you're not monitoring that person, but his identity is key to understanding it's, what you're yeah, monitoring. Exactly. But do you see the, the Orwellian path we're now trotting? You're saying these people are not actually being surveilled, but they, they're literally if being Kisliak surveilled. If Kislyak is talking to the Kremlin about an American, the American may be asleep at the time. That's monitoring what Kislyak has but, to say. But in this case, the American wasn't asleep. The American was speaking. We know in at least we one don't. case. We do, actually. We know in the case of General Mike Flynn, who was speaking, mm. that he was monitored. And he's an American well, citizen. Well, he was talking to the Russian ambassador. Look, uh, uh, you know, you can describe the motive or try and justify yeah. it, but it doesn't change the fact that he was monitored by his government without a warrant and without his knowledge. And so my and that is, look, when I talk to the Russian ambassador, I expect I'm being monitored. And if the Russian ambassador is having conversations that the CIA and FBI aren't monitoring, then why in the hell are we giving them billions of dollars? My question, well, that, I mean, that's a separate question, um, the oversight uh, of the intelligence community. But the Fourth Amendment seems to say that Americans should be immune from monitoring or surveillance or spying or whatever the term we're using without a warrant. And you, I mean, you went to Harvard Law School. Why is the Fourth Amendment suspended when I'm speaking to someone from a foreign country? I don't understand that. Well, it's relatively impossible to listen to half the conversation. Right. If you're going, it is entirely appropriate to monitor what the Russian ambassador is doing. And if I'm on the phone with them or you're on the phone with them, they're going to hear both sides of that conversation. So that doesn't raise any Fourth Amendment concerns for it you at all? It clearly doesn't. Okay. Um, so you said that when you speak to people in foreign countries, you have the expectation that you're being spied upon, monitored, surveilled, whatever, by the U.S. government, that your voice is being picked up. Hillary Clinton and her foundation staff, we know from press reports, spoke to a lot of foreign leaders, who not all of whom are allies of the United States, to put it mildly. So the expectation in that case would be those conversations were picked up by the U.S. government. What happened to them? Do you know? Do you know where the well, that they intelligence haven't been, they, is? They haven't been leaked by the Trump administration. Right. Uh, one would expect that there are hundreds of thousands of pages worth of information collected every day and that Hillary's name has been in them since the 90s because the Russians have been talking to each other about Bill and Hillary Clinton since the 90s. Okay, so this is exactly why I wanted to talk to you specifically, because I think you have been a pretty assertive voice for privacy on behalf of American citizens against their government, and yet you seem to have suspended your normal suspicion in this case because it pertains to the Trump administration and Russia. No, I think that we've been picking up what the Russians communicate back to the Kremlin all the time. And that invariably involves American names. Uh, and one would expect that the Kremlin is talking about President Clinton, then President Bush, then President Obama all the time. But see, what bothers me is we don't know, and as far as I know, you don't know the purpose, specifically the purpose for this surveillance. And as you know, it is not uncommon for intelligence agencies to reverse it. 
I want to spy on you. I can't legally, so I find out who you're speaking to abroad, and I spy on them, and thereby pick up your half of the conversation. That happens, as you well know. Would you sponsor legislation requiring intelligence agencies to explain the purpose of this surveillance before engaging in it? When they're going to get a FISA warrant, they need to explain it. But if, you're, if you are monitoring foreign officials, that's their job, especially if we're talking about hostile foreign officials, such as China and Russia. And but shouldn't they explain it? I mean, so here you have... Yeah, I mean, it's well, well, one sense explanation. Russia's hostile to the United States, and we're keeping well, how track. Well, how about in this sense? So our government is basically ground to a halt. Our relations with a key country in the world, Russia, are on edge as the result of an investigation we know literally nothing about. We don't know its conclusions. We don't really know with any specificity its purpose. And yet all of us are proceeding as if this is normal. Why is that normal? We need a independent investigation of whether Russia colluded with Trump to hack Hillary. Okay. Now, uh, I think the first part of that has already been proven, that Russia did it. I know you disagree. Did, you don't did think it's what proven. exactly? Did the hacking of the DNC and uh, Podesta emails. Now, you but have, is there evidence of that? Anywhere. I mean, have you seen, as a member of Congress and someone who's well versed on intelligence matters, have you seen any evidence? And I know that you're skeptical of the intelligence agency. They've spied on Congress before and not been punished. Have you seen any evidence that that's true? I may not be quite as skeptical as you. When I see Comey and Clapper and Coates all agree, all of them uh, are first appointed by Republican presidents, that conclusion is something that I'm willing to accept because they're not going to give me let alone any, uh, anyone outside of Congress, uh, the uh, sources, methods, and details. Did you, you read the January 6th intelligence community report on Russian spying. I'm sure that you yeah. did. Okay, so um, it said two things that kind of got lost in the noise. The first was that I'm quoting now. We did not make an assessment of the impact that Russian activities had on the outcome of the 2016 election. They're That's the not, first. I'm more qualified, you're more qualified right. to, to make that assessment. We follow politics. But here's the second one. Judgments are not intended to imply that we have proof that shows something to be a fact. Judges are not intended to imply that we have proof that shows something to be a fact. Now, we're operating, you are operating, all of Washington is operating on the assumption that we know for certain that the Russian government hacked those two email accounts, the DNCs and Podestas. And to this moment, not only is there no evidence, but the intel community itself says we don't necessarily that have proof. That was January. They've made What has comments. changed? I have not They're seen gathering any. more information. But why? Look. People's lives are being changed. Their reputations impugned. You saw a member of the Democratic really? member of the Intel Committee today, Joaquin Castro, say he expects people to go to jail. People are being threatened with imprisonment, and there's still no evidence available for public view or even your view. Why? Well, the only person who's being impugned is Putin, and he's got many things to be impugned for. No American has been identified as uh, engaging in any illegal behavior. Are you kidding? Do you watch television every single day? People who work for Trump? And by the way, I don't know mm -hmm. if Paul Manafort, you know, I don't know anything about Paul Manafort. Mm -hmm. I'm merely saying these guys are being held up as Russian agents who changed the outcome of the election. And isn't it incumbent upon elected officials and the agencies to p provide some proof that they did something wrong? We need an investigation. There's no proof but isn't there that any right American now? did anything wrong. Uh, the I thought F there was an investigation ongoing The FBI since spring. is conducting an investigation. I have, and I know you have, some concerns about Comey. I would like to be a special prosecutor or special counsel, do that investigation uh, from a, uh, a Justice Department office, and uh, we ought to also have a, uh, an independent commission. This is okay. important for us to know. We do know this. Emails were hacked, and they were significant. They were much more significant than the files stolen from the Democratic National Headquarters back in Watergate. You know, Those I, we know didn't affect the election in any significant way. Right. McGovern lost in a landslide. I, I, we're out of time. I mean, I'd love to hear someone argue point blank that voters shouldn't have known that information. I was glad to know it before I voted. You can beat any candidate if you can publish everything on their email. All right. And I'm sure that if Bernie voters knew what Hillary really thought of Bernie's hairstyle, we would have lost even more votes. <laughs> That kind of personal good. Chit, that kind of personal chit chat should not be published. Congressman Sherman, thanks for joining us tonight. Good to be with you.